consciousness. So the other project that I've been doing for all over 10 years is um, neutralizing petroleum-based hydrocarbons using mushroom mycelium. And this is a project that we've done that's been written up now in several journals. This is uh, diesel, and this is mushroom mycelium. And this diesel plug, the mushroom mycelium, is absorbing the diesel, uh, it denatures it, and the mushroom mycelium produces these extracellular sweat beads, again, enzymes, lignin peroxidases. And the lignin peroxidases is a, a, a break, break carbon-hydrogen bonds, which is the bond uh, that makes that's the primary bond in lignin. Well, that's also the primary bond in hydrocarbons. So they've been exquisitely uh, well-designed for breaking down a whole suite of hydrocarbon-based contaminants. And so we have now challenged a, a whole bunch of strains against a whole bunch of contaminants, and we found excellent results in breaking down PCBs, PCPs, dioxins, uh, virtually all pesticides, uh, most herbicides, uh, all sorts of uh, uh, petroleum-based uh, fuels, et cetera, uh, diesel, gasoline, et cetera, et cetera. So the university, the uh, Department of Transportation in Bellingham, Washington, was being fined by the Department of Ecology, one state agency fining another state agency, treating it just like it would treat another individual or corporation. That's the way the law reads. Uh, because they had a diesel contamination spill in a big uh, a transportation yard where all these buses were being stored. And because the toxic waste, with the, 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 the levels uh, of these PAHs, which is polyaromatic hydrocarbons, was so high, uh, this, this was off-limits facility. You know, you, you couldn't do any activity there. So they invited six bioremediation companies. And, uh, and so we had a little contest up in Bellingham, Washington, for who could break down this diesel-contaminated soil the best. And so there were six piles that were created, and we had the enzyme chemical treatment people come in, we had the bacterial people come in, and we had other t type of systems that were, were employed uh, to break down these PAHs, the, the, these, these diesel compounds that are present in the soil. And so we inoculated our batch, and then we looked at the piles four weeks later. Four weeks later, a group of scientists and government officials went up to, to, this, to Bellingham, Washington, they pulled uh, apart the black tarps. The first tarp was pulled back is black and neutral, diesel-smelling soil, stinky, dirty black soil that was just stifling in, in its odor. Second pile, same story. Third pile, same story. Fourth pile, same story. The sixth pile, they pulled, up, pulled out, and ours were covered <laughs> with oyster mushrooms. And, OK, all right. And, um, some of these oyster mushrooms were up to over 12 inches in diameter. Now, any of you collecting oyster mushrooms realize that, you know, this is a testimonial to a happy mushroom, the fact that these mushrooms are so large. Um, so we hit a home run. Now, several other things happened. I, I knew I have to stop here in five minutes. I, I have two more slides. The mushrooms then, after about six weeks to seven weeks, began to rot. The mushrooms produced spores. Flies were attracted. The flies laid, they laid eggs. Larvae began to be produced. Birds came in after the larvae. The birds brought in seeds. The seeds germinated. Plants and weeds started to grow. I don't have the final photograph, but after eight to 10 weeks, our berm was an oasis of life, a green zone. And so we invited bacterial remediation because the mushrooms rotted. We invited phytoremediation because the birds brought in seeds. So I believe we found a keystone mechanism by which we can, we can cause a domino effect of remediation that can break down toxic waste.